Hello everybody, this is Sara Oblak Spiker here and uh, today's video is the first one in a series that will be coming to you this week with the intention of giving you the inspiration, the insights, the tools, the transmissions to help you emerge into the world in a way that reflects the fire of your heart, the knowing of your soul and the magic of your energy. Um, you know, <laughs> there is so much magic, speaking of magic, there's so much of it available in every layer and every aspect of our lives. If only we have the audacity to look for it. And audacity is something that I will invite you to tap into um, today, tomorrow and every day. Because when we are answering the calling of our souls and when we are emerging into the world anew, the first thing required in order to do so is ability and audacity to reimagine the possible in new ways. The phrase might sound like a cliche, but it's actually... Um, it there's more to it than what is on a paper visible at first. So today I wanted to take a moment and really walk you through some of the processes and some of the um, things to be aware of when you decide and you choose to dive in this beautiful um, process of reimagining your future, your possibilities, a new way. Now, this video is for those of you who might already have this big vision and vision beyond the vision and plan A, plan B, plan C for all those big visions. However, uh, chances are that you find yourself um, not so sure about how to actually break those down into actionable steps what to do first, and it can be pretty overwhelming. I get it. I have been working with clients who are sitting on the same ledge as you are, staring at the proverbial horizon, seeing it all available, but are not quite sure how to make the sleep, how to make the jump, how to either jump and let the parachute open or how to build a bridge. Uh, some of them actually in working together they said that their 25-year dreams have finally come true within a year or two of us working together. So I totally get that. On the other hand, there's those of us who are so deeply wrapped and um, busy with the day-to-day -day minutia that we absolutely want to be able to dream big, but just don't have the time and capacity to do so. So how to elevate ourselves beyond... Um, putting out the fires and handling all the responsibilities and commitments of day to day to day and actually giving ourselves the time and space to just be, to visualize, to feel into the possibilities and then perhaps reverse engineer. So either one of these two, uh, whichever one of these two resonates with you, the first thing is a choice. It is to simply make a conscious decision to make a choice that, um, you know, in some ways you're going to go the opposite direction from what you usually do. You're going to take the opposite action from what you usually do. You're going to think the opposite thought from what you usually do. You're going to subscribe to different belief, opposite belief from what you usually do. I know it sounds super simple and it actually, what if it was simple? Because it actually is. Um, so with reimagining new possibilities and all the possibilities a new way, um, a lot of us have experienced this almost like a permission to do just that in 2020. If you think about so many things that we were told were impossible and not how it's been done and uh, things that could not be done, whether it comes to uh, work relationship with uh, employers, you know, working from home all of a sudden when for decades it was requested to be in the actual office, uh, whether it's uh, remote learning for the kids or, you know, anything in between. In so many ways, we just experienced how 
the same things we were told could not be possible all of a sudden were because there were no other way, right? They had to happen. And some individuals actually experienced that um, time period, the 2020, as if it was sort of a confirmation for what they had felt a long time um, when they were yearning for something different, but they perhaps just didn't have the courage or maybe they didn't have the reference point for it. Um, and then this past year was kind of a, a catalyst for them to do so. And for some, it became like a, a, a sign that, hey, now is really the time for actually taking this audacious action um, and actually see those plans through because, hey, what do you have to lose, right? Um, so either way, right, reimagining uh, the possible in new ways and how to do so. And like I said, whether you're the one who is stuck with the big picture or the one who's stuck in the minutia, uh, the first thing is to really ask yourself, what is it that you want? And be really honest with yourself. What is that you want? I offer that you really listen to this whisper of your heart because most often than not, the true answer, the most authentic answer will not be screaming, it will be a whisper. And uh, next to that, tap into the why, why do you want it? And keep asking yourself, why do you want it? And you would be surprised how often the things that we say we want and why we want are not even ours. They have been, we have been indoctrinated into wanting them. We have been taught uh, or they have been passed down onto us from our families, from our societies. So give yourself the gift of grace and space to really tap into those two questions. And the beautiful thing about reimagining possible in new ways, there's no timeline attached. There's no deadlines to it. Um, for some of us, things happen real quick which means from today to tomorrow, everything can change. Uh, sometimes things, like I said, with some of my clients, they have been sitting with those visions for 25 years and then all of a sudden, bam, they came to a reality because there's a third step to this process, which is, are you willing, able, and audacious enough to ask for it? See, we are such powerful creatures. We get what we ask for and we create our own realities. Oftentimes, however, when you look around, it's like, but this is not what I wanted, but this is not what I asked for. It is consciously or subconsciously. And also the thing is that when you say, I don't want something, you still are asking for the thing because the God, the universe, they don't distinguish between do and don't. It is what you're focusing on, what you're paying attention to, and what you give the energy to. And then last piece of this uh, beautiful puzzle here is to contemplate and feel into whether or not you're actually willing to give it to yourself. And that is the part that trips the most people. You know, everything is like, okay, great, we got it, but hmm, what am I willing to do to get it? What am I willing to do to give it to myself? Most often than not, we start to backpedal then and rationalize with why are certain things, well, maybe I don't necessarily need it. Maybe I can go without it. So reimagine and then answer those four questions and then be mindful of what else is coming up for you and you will start getting a really clear idea. And this in itself is a first step in re-emerging into the world in a way that really reflects the fire of your heart. The next uh, elements are going to be redefining, recreating, relaunching and releasing and I'll be addressing them over the next couple of days as well. But start with this one. Let me know what happens. Let me know how it goes and uh, let me know if you need any help with that. Um, because oftentimes it's, you know, having the audacity to really go beyond what we think is possible that starts shifting everything. And there are definitely no limits. You can go with something pragmatic with as a <laughs> you know, with something very tangible or something completely unseen. Um, you know what you want, you know what's right for you, you know what's calling you for it. 
that's for right now and I'll talk to you soon.